statistician, and the focus of my work is using vast data sets to come up with new answers to old questions. I'll give you two examples of this. The first is about how we love, and the second is about how we die. So when it comes to how we love, there's a belief that opposites attract, that we prefer those who are different from us. The only problem with this idea is that it's false. I studied a million couples on an online dating website, and what I found is that people were much more likely to message those who were similar to them, not just in terms of obvious things like attractiveness or income, but in terms of subtler qualities like whether you were creative or whether you were athletic. Then I looked at a second data set from a genetics company. This is a little creepy. Using someone's genes, you can tell who they've had children with, and what we found is that people tended to be similar to people they had had children with in terms of hundreds of different traits, everything from whether they apologize frequently to whether they like to go skiing. So when it comes to whether opposites attract, big data shows us that the common beliefs are false. My second example is very different, and it's about cancer. When I was 12 years old, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, and she underwent treatment, and she recovered. And then her doctors told us that we had to wait seven years to see if her cancer would come back, because when cancer recurs, it's very often fatal. In her case, it didn't, but in many cases it does, and this raises a mystery. Why, when we treat the exact same cancer with the exact same drugs, do most of the cells die, but some of them survive, multiply, metastasize, and ultimately kill the patient? The answer is that not all cancer cells are the same, even within a single cancer. Cancer is, in fact, a mosaic of different groups of cells. And the focus of my work this year is in understanding those different groups using statistics. We have data on how hundreds of cancer cells express tens of thousands of genes, and we're trying to divide those cells into groups so we can better understand and treat the different groups. So these two examples seem very different, but the unifying theme is this. In both cases, by combining statistics, computers, and data which has never before been available, we are able to come up with new insights into questions that we've been struggling with for decades. I think this is an idea which is powerful regardless of whether you're interested in economics or biology or psychology or astronomy. It's an idea I'm willing to devote my life to. And if it's an idea that excites you as well, I'd love to talk to you about it. Thank you.